Hello. We're members of Scots at War Living History Society, a reenactment group which portrays soldiers and medical personnel from 1899 to 1945. Here we are portraying members of the 7th Black Watch in 1939. This was a territorial unit made up of volunteer soldiers. But just a month into the war, they were defending Fife from the first attack on British soil. By October 1939, the Second World War had been raging for a month. But the realities of war had yet to touch Britain. In the Kingdom of Fife, life continued as usual, with only the occasional air raid drill and the issue of gas masks to remind people of the imminent danger. The country had not yet felt the pinch of rationing, and the street lamps were still lit each night. The men of the 7th Black Watch spent their days guarding vulnerable points on the banks of the River Forth. On the water, the naval base at Rosyth and the surrounding river was filled with ships sitting at anchor. And in the skies, auxiliary squadrons of the Royal Air Force patrolled, but saw nothing of the enemy. It was what came to be known as the Phony War. Despite the importance of their task, the 7th Battalion was woefully under-equipped. In fact, the uniform and kit worn at the outbreak of the Second World War would not have looked wildly out of place in the trenches of 1918. The new battle dress uniform had not yet been issued, and limited supplies of webbing were available. Passive air defence equipment, including respirators and anti-gas capes, were only issued after war had been declared, and attack became likely. Most notably, these soldiers still wore the kilt, and fully intended to fight in it until they were finally issued battle dress trousers in 1940. The distinctive red hackle of the Black Watch was painted on the helmet, helping to promote pride in the regiment at the expense of camouflage. This didn't matter much in the peaceful autumn of 1939, but it was not to last. On the 16th of October 1939, Fife and the 4th were to become the scene of the first aerial attack of the war. Early in the morning, a reconnaissance aircraft was sighted over the 4th, but was soon intercepted by the Royal Air Force, and the troops on the ground took little notice. Shortly after midday, the first wave of three Yonkers 88 bombers appeared in the skies over Scotland. At 14.27 they were spotted over the 4th, and soon began their attack. They had strict orders only to attack ships on the open river. The nearby towns, the rail bridge, and the Rosyth naval base were not targets, and so it was over the 4th that the fiercest fighting took place. At 14.29, the air raid warning was sounded at vulnerable point number 5, a fortified post near the 4th bridge, manned by men of the 7th Black Watch. And the enemy aircraft were sighted, but were above 2,000 feet, out of rifle range. Vulnerable point 83, under the command of Lieutenant Campbell, was given no warning. At 14.42, sentries sighted the aircraft and saw them attack the ships. This time they had to fly below 2,000 feet in order to drop their bombs, and Campbell ordered his men to open fire. These were the first shots fired by the British infantry during the Second World War, and in combination with actions of the Navy, the Royal Air Force and the land batteries, helped to ensure British victory in the battle. However, the local territorial's part in the action is often forgotten, and this is why we tried to bring their story to life. It was a rough awakening for the 7th Black Watch, but it served to prepare them for what was to come. By 1943, they were fighting again, this time in North Africa, and, fittingly, they would eventually become some of the first British soldiers to cross the Rhine in 1945. However, they suffered heavy casualties in both theatres, and many never made it back to Fife. We hope you've enjoyed this short video, and please feel free to ask any questions in the live chat.